Kabete National Polytechnic, formerly known as the Kabete Training Institute, is located along Nairobi's Woyaki Way, about five kilometers from Nairobi's central business district. Kabete National Polytechnic is renowned countrywide and considered as one of the best training institutions, not just in Kenya, but in the region. Kabete National Polytechnic uh, started as Native Industrial uh, Training uh, depot in around 1909-1910. Uh, it was a place where uh, people would be recruited to go for the First World War. Then after the First World War, they would come back for training to integrate them into the mainstream society. Then again, uh, later on in 1924, it became so much activated by the colonial government to the extent that it was now opened to the general public for training in certain specific uh, skill areas like uh, uh, plumbing, uh, meter reading, and those kind of things. Uh, it went on like that uh, with training 1924 up to again uh, 1945. It reverted back to a recruitment center again for those who are going to the Second World War. Um, this went on like that until the early 60s when Kabete was established as a national uh, technical uh, school for boys. So that went on for quite some time until the change of the system of education in 1985-86. That now converted Kabete and upgraded it to Kabete Technical Training Institute. So that went on with the 844 system until early 2016 when uh, Kabete was elevated to a national polytechnic by a polytechnic order. The institute, which is accredited by TVET, has registered commendable growth in the past few years. Under the stewardship of the school principal Charles Akach, Kabete National Polytechnic has grown from a population of about 2,000 students in the year 2016 to about 8,000 in 2018. This institution has um, currently about 8,000 students and about 250 trainers. Um, about 150 are employed by the government and 100 are, are, are employed by the Polytechnic. And uh, what we do here is uh, we make sure that any student who comes here goes out with the required skills in that particular trade in which he or she has been enrolled. Um, we make sure that our students are hands-on, such that uh, once a student goes through the course, whether two years or three years, then outside there, the employers normally come back and say, give us more. That is what you've been getting. Be because we have, we have undedicated staff, a staff that wants to produce the best for this particular country. And uh, through that, we have made sure that our students, any time they go even for attachment, we get very good commendation letters from the, the, the employers where they are attached. And I think um, that has done us uh, very well, even in terms of uh, absorption, even when they live here. So we make sure that our students do not only get the theory part of it, but they get the practical bit, they are answered when it comes to whatever the trend they are, they are being trained in. As you understand, this is a national polytechnic. So basically, <laughs> this has got the face of the country. Uh, if you look at the composition of the students, you will find that the students come from all parts of this country, uh, and, uh, both male and female, there's no discrimination. And as you know, we are encouraging more girls to apply especially for STEM courses, that is science, uh, technology, and engineering courses. So, as we talk, we are not only limited to this country because if you look at our mission, it's Africa and beyond. So, as we talk, we have got some students from other countries like Uganda. Uh, we have got some students from uh, uh, Sudan and there's some from Tanzania. The Institute has nurtured many professionals in the country who are now placed in both the private and public sector, with one of the Institute's alumni being Kenya's founding father, Mze Jomo Kenyatta.
We expect to launch an alumni in this institution. We have realized that uh, Kabete has some of the best uh, students who are there then. Some of them are as probably old as I am, but they are holding uh, senior positions in this, in this country, both in the public sector and in the private sector. And we want to bring them on board so that they can give back to the institution uh, which has made them to be what they are. Ministry of Interior and Coordination Permanent Secretary Karanja Kibicho and the Kenya Air Force Commander Samuel Doite are also among the Polytechnic's alumni. Kenya's Vision 2030 blueprint envisages a country that has achieved middle income status, an industrialized country that is powered by a high skilled workforce which has been lacking despite the high unemployment rate, especially among the youth. Technical and Vocational Education and Training, TVET, offered here at Kabete Polytechnic, which focuses on market-driven courses, helps develop a mass of skilled graduates. Key among courses offered are Mechanical Engineering, Building and Civil Engineering, Electrical and Electronics Engineering, ICT, Research, Business, among others. We can say that our students are creative, they are innovative and we give them a, a vigorous uh, teaching and that is why they are able to get the jobs, they get the employment outside there because we sometimes follow on what they are doing out and they have become competent. Many organizations, especially the middle level companies, want to employ our students. Peter Ocheng, the head of Department Building and Civil Engineering, says for a long time, students in the country have had a bias against technical courses because they believe that they are of low value than professional courses, but that perception is changing. We really have a big number of students who are taking certificate courses because these are basically the hands-on courses. Uh, maybe there are students who didn't make it for diploma but they want to start down there with the certificates. So we gave them that uh, hands-on uh, exposure in those three areas of carpentry, plumbing, and masonry. He, however, says there's need for proper regulation in the sector so that professionals can reap maximum benefit from it. The industry is really recreative. There are jobs out there, but then uh, there must be a proper regulation in the industry. Uh, this is an industry that has uh, been uh, raided by many quacks who are doing those jobs out there. Some don't have certification, they are not accredited by NCA. So I think uh, the regulators like NCA, uh, once they are able to clean up the environment, then the young people will come in who have the right papers, and who have the right skills, and I'm sure their remunerations will be, will be good. So it needs to be regulated thoroughly and uh, so that the young people can see that uh, it's something that you can do for, for a living and take it as a career. The deputy head of department engineering says technical education holds a lot of potential for the country but notes more should be done to encourage more female students to take up the technical courses. Before we never used to have the modular courses. The modular courses just came in about uh, 211. That's when we started having the modular courses. Now, when you used to have the, um, the normal TEP, the normal diploma courses, we used to get very few girls because it was a little bit difficult. Now, uh, the, it has changed because now it's a module. Like you go one year, go to the poor attachment, come back. At least a little bit easier and flexible. You can come at your own pace, study, and then go maybe out, come back. But the ratio is still the same. It's, it's not so much. What they can do is um, encourage them a little bit, or maybe take lower grades and encourage them upwards, and then also offer them some scholarship or something. The ICT department, which began in 1996 with an initial class of four students, has also witnessed massive growth in numbers and courses being offered. Uh, this department we started way back 1996. Originally, it was under electrical department. Then later, it grew from four students to 20 students. And then in 2000 is when it became a fully functional department. But from that time up to date, it has continued to grow considerably. 
currently, our students are 700 in the ICT department. There has been multiple reforms in TVET institutions as the government seeks to address rising demands of technical skills in the labor market and also answer the question of unemployment among the youth. The introduction of competency-based education and training CBET approach, which guarantees certification based on demonstration of competence while offering flexible pathways for TVET graduates, has seen students here stand out from other graduates in a hugely competitive labor market. So far as we are talking, there are about four the curricula that is already, they have already made CBET-based. And the, the curriculum is designed such that the students who come here they will stay here for three months. They will learn both using the machines here and also the theory bit of it. And then the other three months, they will go to the factory and they, 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 will, they will learn from there, hands on from the factory. And both here and in the factory, CDAC will be involved in the assessment, plus trainers here, plus also the factory. So we find the three parties which will be involved in the assessment. Exposure of students at Kabeta National Polytechnic to industry players has also been instrumental in ensuring graduates here get a feel of what is expected of them after training. In this case, we have signed MOUs with Toyota Kenya. We have signed MOUs with uh, Liwa Trust, that is the linking education with uh, industry. Uh, as we do that, we have got CMC on board. So when we talk about this, industry they are able to give us an input on where they will want us to train and then when we train we are together they give the students internship with the promise that when they complete they will be absorbed in the job market the training that i have received here from the time i joined this institution now i'm now living i it it's I, actually it makes me from whatever that i've been uh, having the training that i've been undertaking here uh, it's perfect. I'm going to be in a position to do job outside there. I would encourage more people to come and more students, um, everyone who is interested in studying any course in this school, to be to be here in partnership with us. It's not just pharmacy, engineering, and all. They encourage like they can take their project, of which is a very encouraging thing, and we offer many courses, and it's a very conducive place for all studies. In the Office of the Dean of Students, we make sure that students are comfortable while they are undertaking their studies in the Polytechnic. We handle all their issues. We want to make sure that as we release them in the job market, there are people who, are, who can be employed and they not give employers a hard time while they are being employed. Under the Dean's Office, we have a dispensary which takes care of their general health. We have our kitchen where they normally take their meals and we also usually make sure that the meals are up to the standard. We make sure that they, they, they are, the food that they are served is of good quality. Moreover, students here are also exposed to global training through exchange programs with key partners. We have tried to expose our students and uh, we have done uh, various partnerships. With, like we have, we have a partnership with the Canadian government with some polytechnics in Canada so that uh, we have some of their students come from Canada and, and, and they come here in our institution. They learn for a certain period of time and then our students also, they go out to Canada and they learn. So we have the exchange program of both the students and the staff. Staff also will go to Canada, get some training, come back. Canadian staff also will come here and get some training and then, then, then go back. So that way, we, we, we expose both the staff and the students to what is happening outside this country. I was a part of a team that went to South Africa last year, April, to present our research findings that we had conducted internally to an international conference under CAPA, a Commonwealth Association of Polytechnics in Africa. Affordability of technical education has also been guaranteed by the government. Starting 1st July 2018, uh, the government has actually made sure that uh, the admission of uh, students in the technical institutions is going through the Kenya Universities and College Center Placement Services, what people popularly call COOPs, so that uh, people are not, students are not just going to walk in and walk out with the admission letters, but they have to, whether they come through us or through COOPs, 
they have to go through the system so that now COOPS is the one that will be forwarding the names to, to the government so that uh, they can now be uh, facilitated uh, financially. The government is doing its best to see that, uh, especially the technical courses, you know, they are very much affordable. So we are receiving grants to facilitate that. And this grant come in quarterly basis. Yeah, so the government is doing quite well to make sure that uh, our students are, you know, getting affordable education. The Higher Education Loans Board also offers a loan of 45,000 shillings to students pursuing various courses in technical institutions. The government has made it very easy because uh, earlier on every institution in this country was charging according to how the management or the councils and the board of management would come up with their, their fee structures. But uh, starting 1st July 2018, all technical institutions, whether the, the technical training institutes or the national polytechnics are all going to be charging one fees uh, uh, that is uh, 56,420. So everyone will be required to charge that, nothing more or less. And now um, in terms of uh, people being able to transit from secondary to technical institution, I think uh, from how we are, where we are right now, it will be 100%. Because first of all, the government has introduced capitation. Every student will be uh, given 30,000 per year. So that means that if we are talking of 56,420, already we are discussing uh, 26,420. There has been support of students here by private organizations such as KCB Foundation under the Tujia Jiri program that sponsored 38 students and the Equity Foundation's Wings to Fly program that has sponsored 100 students. The welfare of trainers is also well taken care of with just recently the government making a decision to move trainers from the Teachers Service Commission to the Public Service Commission. With a population of about 8,000 students against 250 trainers, is quality education and training still guaranteed in this institution? Because of the big population, sometimes some of our students normally don't make it. So if they don't make it, we give them a second chance by having some special classes, which we call uh, special classes, we don't call them at failure classes, but special classes to at least give the, the Kenyans a second chance instead of discontinuing them completely. The dedication of our staff is so unique that we start our classes from seven, contrary to what other institutions do. Other institutions start learning from eight. Here we start from seven, and we end at seven, when others are starting at ending at five and or four. So, so we, are, we, are, we are unique in that, in that form. And, and, and this is a culture that we have created in the last um, three years so that uh, we are able to do what we can to our learners despite uh, the population which is here. To celebrate the unique cultures represented by the population of students and also promote cohesiveness, a cultural week is held yearly. <laughs> That said, however, the growing population also presents some challenges. Kabete has been known to accommodate only 1,600. We have been able to put up another hostel facility that can accommodate 400, so that brings it to about 2,000. Now, the challenge is, out of 10,000 plus, we have a, a shortage of accommodation to the tune of 8,000 students. So we are forced even to uh, outsource for accommodation facilities outside this institution, but up to a population of 320. So that is another very big challenge in terms of accommodation facility, in terms of tuition blocks, in terms of workshops, and in terms of laboratories because of the, the population uh, boom that we have experienced. Kabeta National Polytechnic is the polytechnic of the choice. One, its location is uh, very good, located in Nairobi where it's very accessible. And secondary, it has been upgraded recently, where we hope that the government will support us with the infrastructures and uh, we can be able now to house more students. 
Technical and vocational education and training in Kenya is the pathway that Kenya will use to accelerate its development agenda and achieve Vision 2030. Kabete National Polytechnic has been responsible for the success of many industry players in Kenya and beyond and still promises to be the preferred vehicle that will ensure the country achieves its development vision of 2030. The idea of a technical college in this country originated from Kabete. All those technical colleges that we talk about in this nation have been as a result of this particular institution. And therefore, we want Kabete, we are taking back Kabete to its past glory. We want Kabete to be the best technical college that somebody can talk about, not only in Kenya, but in the whole of Eastern Africa region. And with a lot of support from the government, organizations of goodwill and other partners, we expect Kabete to be in the Eastern African region map, not necessarily um, uh, Kenya alone. And again, Kabete being the only national polytechnic in Nairobi County, we expect it to be a good example where people, other polytechnics and technical colleges can come here for benchmarking. <music>